The Kyocera or Yashka T series of compact 35mm point of shoot cameras holds cult status among many film camera enthusiasts. Often praised for their excellent autofocus, especially with the later models, high quality optics, as well as weatherproofing and a waist level finder for some models. The T series all features Zeiss optics with T star coatings, and except for the T4 zoom, the series was equipped with 35mm lenses. Interestingly, in the middle of the series, the T3 or T scope featured the brightest lens at f2.8 compared to 3.5 on the models that came before and after. Different markets featured different naming conventions, and to make matters even more confusing, model variations often just tacked on a moniker like Super at the end, which is not always a clear distinction as to what makes it different from the standard model. So it's best to do some research before committing to one of these cameras, so you make sure that you pick up the one that works best for you. To me, the most interesting of the series have always been the models with the built-in waist level viewfinders, like the T-Scope and T-Proof I have here. So I wanted to put them head to head and compare their optics and functionality and break down their similarities and differences. With the more standard non-waist level finder versions also sharing similar functionality and optics, I hope this test can help give reference to those interested in the T-Series of cameras in general and help me finally answer which one of these two cameras works best for me. I'm David, and this is the whole picture. While these two cameras do share a fairly similar photographic experience, being standard, full, automatic point-and-shoot cameras, they look like they're from two completely different worlds, and have distinct design choices that separate them. The Kyocera T-Proof, or Yashka T5, is more akin to what you would imagine when someone mentions a compact 35mm camera with a retracting lens, plastic shell, and if it's in a pocket reasonably well, you get the picture. The Kyocera T-Scope 1 and 2, or the Yashka T3 or T3 Super on the other hand, are closer to a small, interchangeable lens camera in size, and so it's more difficult to pocket, not impossible, but you need something like cargo shorts or a winter coat to fit it comfortably. Another design difference is the lens protection method. The T-Scope lens is non-retracting and instead features a sliding cover and something like a protection filter in front of the lens. Both of these cameras also feature a two-step shutter where a half-press locks focus and exposure, which is confirmed by a green light in the viewfinder, and we also get a red light as an underexposure or flash warning. I find that the T-proof system is well implemented, being fast and mostly accurate, but only after pressing the shutter will the lens focus and take a photo. This does introduce a little bit of lag between pressing the shutter and actually taking a photo, but it's minimal and I found that the focusing mechanism and shutter are decently quiet. On the other hand, the T-Scope's implementation is at the same time fantastic, yet frustrating. We do get similar shutter lag, but film advance only happens after you release the shutter. And this is an excellent feature for, say, street photographers, as the film advance is pretty loud compared to the relatively soft and quiet shutter. My issue with the T-Scope has more to do with the shutter button itself. While the T-Proof has a fairly standard plastic shutter button, the T-Scope sits below a soft, flexible material, so it's not always clear where the actuation point that initiates the half press and requires just a bit more force than you would expect to lock focus and exposure. I also had one or two occasions where the camera couldn't seem to lock focus on a quick snap, in which case pressing the shutter would not take a photo. For the most part, the T-Scope is fast and accurate, but this has cost me at least one nice photo opportunity. In a similar way, both cameras will also not take a photo when subjects are too close to the camera, and you get feedback in the finder in the form of a blinking green light. The T3 Super, or the T-Scope 2, also uniquely has a continuous photo mode not often seen on cameras of this class. Beyond usability, I was mostly interested in putting these cameras head-to-head -to, -head to see if there would be any exposure differences considering the T-Scope as a faster lens. I loaded both cameras with Lomo 800 color film and tried to match what I could, but with no manual settings, it's not really a perfect comparison. With a photo like this, I turned off the flash and locked focus on the close subject, being inside with dim light. I assumed that it would force the apertures wide open on both cameras. And you can see that the T-Scope's photo has slightly more blur on the symbol right here. But when viewing this at a normal distance, it's pretty difficult to tell the difference between the two. I can't say for certain that this is f2.8 versus 3.5, but it does seem like the T-Scope used a wider aperture in this photo than the T-Proof. I also tried to open up the aperture with this low light scene. There's a difference between the focus distance, but even with that discrepancy, it's very difficult to tell the difference in the amount of background blur. But it is easier to see that the T-scope exposure here is slightly brighter, and I remember on several occasions while doing this comparison that the T-proof would bring up the red light for flash or underexposure when the T-scope did not, like in this scene. And I think these results do show the benefits of having access to an f2.8 aperture, with the T-proof being underexposed, while the T-scope shows no motion blur while being an overall better exposure. 
In general, I was really impressed with the T-Scope's low light performance. I found that many point and shoots tend to slow down the shutter significantly if you turn off the flash, even with ISO 800 film, but that doesn't really seem to be the case here. It might have something to do with the T-Scope settings, instead of the typical flash off setting we see on compact cameras. The only setting that disables a flash is called night scene mode. In the T-Scope 2 manual, it refers to the shutter being slower and to use a tripod, but in my use, it seems to favor underexposing, but with a reasonable handheld shutter speed while maintaining decent autofocus. In general, the autofocus on both of these cameras seems to be above the average point and shoot. Even when it comes to close focus performance, I was pretty impressed with both of these cameras. The T-Proof does have closer focus capabilities, and you can see a rough comparison of the minimum focus distance with these photos, but it's not perfect, and oddly enough, in a photo like this, both cameras did not focus correctly. And for a low light photo, the T-Proof actually looks a bit brighter here. In more landscape style photos during the day, the two cameras perform very similarly, but even in bright light, I found that the T-Scope photos can be underexposed ever so slightly, like with this photo. The shadows are just a bit muddier, with more pronounced grain and lacking in detail compared to the T-Proof. You can somewhat compensate for this with the light retouching, but the T-Proof's exposures tend to be more balanced and pleasing, overexposing slightly, and retaining more information throughout the photos. This leads me to think that the T-Scope exposes exactly at box speed, leading to color film having thin shadows, while the T-Proof overexposes ever so slightly to really bring out the contrast and quality on color film. This makes sense when you consider the low light performance of both cameras. Since the T-Proof has a slower aperture and overexposes slightly, it's more likely to need flash or underexpose in low light scenarios, while the T-Scope has a brighter aperture and exposes at box speed, leading to less motion blur at night, but with less details in the shadows in general. Going back to one of the first comparisons, while the T-Scope might have slightly more background blur, if we look at the dark clothing, the T-Scope is muddier with more grain and less detail, while the T-Proof is overall a much better exposure. And I think in general, the more modern T-Proof has more hits in terms of focus and exposure than the T-Scope, but not by much. I also have to mention that both of my cameras actually broke in the same place in a similar fashion. The battery doors on these cameras require quite a bit of force to open, and you'll need something like a coin to get some leverage. This is in part to help with the weather sealing, but this amount of force with a coin has caused part of the plastic doors on both of my cameras to break off, and this can be quite a big deal if the plastic latch breaks off from the door. On my T-Proof, it's more of a cosmetic issue, but on the T-Scope, the latch has become very loose and doesn't instill confidence, so now I have to use tape to make sure it's held shut. Regardless, and despite their issues, I have a soft spot for both of these cameras. It's not for their optics or autofocus, which are good, but can be found on other point issue cameras. It's really because of their waist level finder. Before flip out screens, these were some of the only compact cameras that allowed you to photograph more easily from different vantage points and different situations. And in general, I find that photographing from the waist or really anything other than eye level tends to be more cinematic and compelling. Of course, there are twin lens cameras and waist finders for SLRs, even auxiliary waist level viewfinders like this shoe mounted option from Leica. But having this feature built into a high quality point and shoot is a joy to use and they're pretty unique in the waist finder space, being some of the very few non-interchangeable lens cameras to offer lenses as wide as 35mm equivalents and especially cool considering their relatively compact size. While there are a few wide-angle twin lens camera options out there, when it comes to 35mm non-interchangeable lens cameras, the only other one I know of is the Canon Autoboy Prisma Date, which I've already covered on the channel, and I'll leave a link down below. Of the three, the Canon is the cheapest, and I think offers a great value for money, and the lowest barrier to entry for a camera like this. The T-Proof, with its cult status, has the highest price tag, but for those that really need a rugged yet pocketable waist finder camera, there really isn't an alternative and can be worth the popularity tax. I love using it for cycling and more sporty activities because of this, but for the majority of photographers, it probably isn't the right fit. While the T-Scope is larger and has its quirks, I think it's a better compromise for most people, including myself. In making this video, I found myself appreciating the faster aperture as well as the T-Scope's low light performance. And in general, my primary use case for a camera like this would be street photography and random snaps. In both cases, the Wastefinder is a great tool and the delayed film advance is something that I wish more cameras offered. The slight underexposure, as well as its size, does make it a little bit less useful for certain work, but for something like street photography, I can see this being a great black and white camera where you can more easily compensate for thin shadows with alternative or push processing of your film. Anyways, I hope you liked this video and let me know what you think is the best option for the Kyocera or Yashka T-Series of cameras. I'm David and this is the whole picture.